get to the money. Hey, gotta get to the money. Uh huh. Early morning, so you know that I'm on it. So you know that I'm on it. Gotta make sure that my family's straight. Gotta make sure that my kids and me. Welcome to another episode of Drinking After Dark, a podcast where we discuss random topics while having a few drinks. I'm your host, Darius, and it's always drink responsibly. And y'all make sure y'all follow Drinking After Dark podcast on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and y'all make sure y'all like and subscribe to Drinking After Dark podcast YouTube channel. Tonight, y'all know what I'm drinking on, man. I'm drinking on my Crown Royal Vanilla mixed with Dr. Pepper Cream Soda. I mean, y'all know that's my go-to drink. Um, also, too, before we get started, I want to give a huge shout-out to my sponsor, Joe Shakinab and Shakinab.com. Y'all go visit Shakinab.com for services, monthly updates, and contact information. Once again, visit Shakinab.com, promoting leadership and scholarship. Tonight, man, we have a great episode, man. Uh, There's something I want to talk about, man. Uh, it's about my childhood and everything uh, and stuff like that. But before we get into that, uh, just let people know if you uh, if you want to sponsor or advertise on Drinking After Dark Podcast, please contact me at uh, Drinking After Dark Podcast on Facebook or Instagram. Just send a DM there, and um, you know I'll give you details on that. Or, you know, if you'd like to be a guest, man, everybody is welcome, you know, so just hit me up there, you know, bring you on. We can have a great time, man, just have fun. Um, So let's go and get into it. Uh, this is what I wanted to talk about, um, my childhood. So y'all know I'm really into sports. Y'all know that, you know, basketball and football, the two sports I'm really into and stuff like that. Um, I grew up playing basketball. I played football for a little bit, but, uh, you know, I, I grew up, I was that type of kid that was, you know, with sports and, and no cartoons and, uh, you know, some movies and things like that. But um, I remember around, what was it, 98, 99, when I first was introduced to um, N1 basketball. And um, the reason I wanted to talk about this is because, um, there's a documentary out uh, on Netflix called The Rise and Fall of N1. And this is what I wanted to talk about today because it was like part of my childhood growing up. If you was a hooper like me, you grew up, you watched the mixtape, uh, the the whole mixtapes. And of course, you know, you saw the uh, street ball, which is on ESPN, uh, you know, dealing with the N1 mixtape tour. To me, when you saw N1 when it first came onto the scene, it was nothing like the NBA, right? You know, street ball, it was more, you know, it, it, it felt like you're free, right? There was like no rules. You were just playing ball, um, really out there grinding, making a name for yourself and everything like that. And then the very first mixtape came out, which is referred to as the uh, skip tape, right? Skip to my Lou to me is like the Michael Jordan of street ball, right? You know, he pretty much put the whole N1 on the map with his first mixtape. And when I first seen it, you know, that was it, was, it was like nothing you ever seen before, right? You know what I mean? It was like a blueprint to people to go out there, try new moves and all of that stuff. And as time went on, you know, you had the volume two. Um, volume three is which really got me into the whole N1 brand, right? Because see, at first, all right, before I get into that, let me go back a little bit. So N1, it was a a, a brand, right? Where um, it was like a basketball brand where they were selling like a pair of like T-shirts and everything. I had an N1 T-shirt um, back then. I know a lot of people had N1 T-shirts back then. It was a whole different brand. 
no stuff like that. Um, and then they try to get into the shoe market, trying to get to the shoe market, trying to compete with Nike. Um, their first attempt basically failed. If y'all know why it failed the first time, I suggest you guys watch the uh, documentary on Netflix. Um, that's, you know, y'all should watch it. All right. But I'm just giving y'all my take on it, how I saw things and how I kind of view things growing up. So. Uh, you know, the shirts was, you know, was out there that was selling and everything like that. And of course, you know, I mentioned they put together. Uh, they had all these uh, tapes, right, of guys playing. And of course, you know, Skip to My Lou, they put his uh, compilation, well, mixtape, right? That's why they call it the mixtape, because, uh, you know, their dark, uh, target demographics and everything. But uh, that really got them like, okay, maybe we need to target this market some. But I really got into the N1 brand watching Volume 3. In Volume 3, that's when you were introduced to Hot Sauce and AO. Um, of course, you had um, you had main event, you had half man, half amazing, Shane the dribbling machine, headache. You know, uh, I remember even aircraft during that time. Of course, you know Skip. Obviously, you had um, yeah, like a lot of guys. I'll be right back. You know, I remember a lot of those guys uh, back then. But Volume Three, when they introduced Skip. I mean, I skipped, but high sauce and AO, I feel like, okay, now they have elevated more, right? When high sauce came into play, high sauce basically, I think he truly defined the M1 brand of basketball. And of course, you know, mixtape four, and they had all these different mixtapes. You know, you can actually go on YouTube and rewatch, you know, the mixtapes and all of that. Um, with that being said, after watching the uh, documentary on Netflix, I just, from what I, before the documentary, right, I always felt like N1 was meant for a specific time, right? Even though it took over the world, I think at some point, I think it started to become a, this is just me talking, all right? As, as a hooper and everything like that, this is just me talking it felt like it was more of a circus than hooping at some point. Like the tricks was all good, but it seemed like they were more focused on doing tricks than they were about getting buckets. Right. And that's what, especially when you watched um, street ball, you know, you watch all the seasons of street ball, you start seeing like, Oh man, you know, do the tricks, do the tricks, do the tricks. And you start seeing guys come up when they had the contest you know, that's the only thing they were doing, just trying to get tricks and get the oohs and ahs. And I'm like, you know, that's all good and all, but after you do a, a move and you try to go for a shot, you missing the, the goal by 10 feet. It's like, what's, what's the whole point of doing all of this, right? Um, I just felt like it was more about show than it was about, you know, guys hooping, right? And I know they had their issues in terms of, you know, them not getting paid what they were worth and everything like that. Again, go watch the documentary. But I just felt like, you know, the plan in the beginning was a great plan, right? You saw the essence of street ball players. You saw them on the playground. You really didn't – you saw some fancy passes and everything like that. You saw them, you know, playing, you know, freelance basketball but it was in the flow of the game and they didn't stop the flow of the game at all and you had guys who really took pride on the blacktop but the moment they start you know they start becoming real big I think to me I just felt like these are not the same guys that put in the work on the blacktop and try, they trying to translate it to you know the hardwood but it just became such a circus at some point, right? Because once, and I don't know if you guys pay attention. As soon as somebody do a move, they just let them go in for a dunk. It's like, they don't even try. It's like, all right, they got the move off. They let them go down the lane, dunk, whatever, and just move on to the next play. 
And you know, in and with the N one, the N one brand, you have to mix buckets with entertainment, right? And you know, yeah, guys on there who are legit. Like, I'm not saying all of them are not hoopers. All of them are hoopers. But you have some who are more entertainers than anything else. They're known for entertainment, you know. And I just felt like the guys who put in the work, they were being overshadowed by. I guess the generation after them coming up and just doing nothing but tricks, right? They're doing nothing but tricks and their team losing by 20, right? It's all about, well, yeah, we lost by 20, but I got like three highlights, right? Here's another thing um, from my observation when it comes to the N1 uh, mixtape tour, watching it, I just felt like, When they first start doing the contest, when they start doing the contest, you no, know, some guys came out, you like, oh, yo, that dude right there is legit, right? The first year they did it was uh, the year the professor made it, right? But you also had some great talent. I mean, you had Spider that came out on that first season. Of course, he won in the second season. Helicopter came on and basically just took over. Right. Helicopter basically was to me, you know, if, even though they gave him a contract right after that, I felt like he should have won because I, I felt like his. I felt like he was the better player. I feel like what he brought to him one. Um, was needed because when you look at him one, there's so many guards on there, you know, can handle the ball. They don't have, you know, in terms of like guys running to the rim, catching the lives and all of that. I felt like helicopter was that perfect fit. Now, when it came to the professor, right? You know, a lot of people, professor, let's say this. The, the professor made the game. He made N1 mainstream, right? He made it mainstream based on his image, right? And you had a lot of guys who was probably envy of that. Because, you know, like this guy really didn't when you when you hear the stories of a lot of these uh, hoopers playing in the tournaments, you know, getting getting the respect on the streets. This guy just come in. You know. Came in, he could play, he could play. But when you put him. I just felt like he was picked up more so for. To broaden in one because of the image because he will he will bring in people he will bring in a viewership that they say not necessarily reach but they were already reaching it anyway because they were grabbing them as you know already so i just felt like and i'm not taking anything away from the professor i mean what he's doing now you could tell his growth and everything like that cool but i don't see professor as a as a hooper i see professor as an entertainer Right. I never heard professor in terms of, you know, he dominated this league. He dominated that league. You know, he didn't even get a name before he joined the M1. Dude gave him the name, the professor, and it's stuck. Right. It's his own brand. It's stuck with him. But a lot of these guys got their names before M1. So they already knew who they were. They everybody who's seen them playing can play can validate them on the street. I never heard anybody say the professor, even now, yo, this dude dominated that tournament. That man got MVP. He was you know, killing him on the court and everything like that. I never heard that. You know, so that's what, to me, I felt like when it reached its highest, I think that's where it started to downfall because it became more, and you no, know, there's a business aspect too. So, you know, with the founders, they had to look at it from a business standpoint. Um, but the players, you know, to me, you have to go earn your respect. And I think the fact that he didn't really garner that respect before M1, not saying he didn't deserve to get picked up. What I'm saying is at some point, you know, what we did out here, how we played in the summertime, you know, in these tournaments, 100 degree weather. 110 on the court, you know what I mean? 
you know, going hours and hours and hours just hooping, making a name for themselves. I just felt like he didn't have to go through that. His his trial was that tour, right? And not only that, but he I don't feel like he necessarily went against the best to get to that point. Yeah, he played against the N1 players, right? But in terms of, like, when you're talking about these uh, playground tournaments, right, where, where they uh, – you had, you know, N one is is all about tricks, but when you go to the playground, oh no, it's it's about guarding your man one on one. See what I'm saying? It's that pride on the court, saying, "Hey, listen, you know, all those tricks that you're doing out there ain't gonna work out here. You're gonna have to come out here. You don't have to hoop. You have to guard somebody, and you have to give it right back to him." And I just felt like, to me, the professor hasn't done that even even now. Um, a lot of guys that. Uh, played on the tour, you know, like I said, Skip, Skip is the one, the only player that made it to the league. No, he's the only player that made it to the league and uh, rightfully so. I mean, he went to Fresno state, um, killing it at Fresno state, got to the league, took him a while to actually get the playing time that he really needed. But once he got his opportunity, he uh, took full advantage of it. Um, another guy like Hedick is another guy I've seen play. Um, uh, point guard, defense, um, guy who got handles. Um, also, who's a student of the game of basketball, right? And I think a lot of times we forget not only are they ballers, but they're students of the game. And now you see them coaching WNBA, um, WNBA players in the WNBA. So, but, you know, you have a lot of guys who, uh, you know, I, you could tell they were legit hoopers, right? They just know how to do tricks. You know, that's the thing about it. It was like guys who – and here's the thing, too. A lot of them did play college ball, right? Main event, Rutgers, Major D1, right? So he played Major D1. Um, who else? Helicopter played D1. Um, this was kind of like a little later. I think Headache played D1. Uh, who else? I think Go Get It played D1. Uh, you had uh, Bad Santa came on. He played D1. The eighth one to play D1. So that's when they start picking up like D1 guys, uh, professional players who played overseas. But, um, at some point, I think their brand of basketball wasn't going to last long, right? And, yeah, you see guys in the league now doing a lot of this stuff that you see from N1, but it wasn't like you stop and you see them just him just doing his thing over here. No, it was pretty much all in the flow of the game, you know, and stuff like that. So my take on N1 – he had his great run, but I just felt like at some point it became more about the tricks than about these guys' reputations. Because I felt like their reputations were um, – I, I, I'll put it this way. I don't think that the executives of the company truly respected their reputations before they got to – before they got to them, Right. Because, you know, when you have – when you build a name for yourself and you build a reputation, you, that's, what, that's what you stick to. And I think a lot of times um, those old school guys, they felt like this is not them. I mean, it's a check. Don't get me wrong. It's a check. But at some point, you got like, is my reputation worth sacrificing? Right? And I, I don't think that at some point you just got to say, you know what, this ain't worth it. You know, my reputation is not. You know, of course, when it comes to the business aspect of it, you know, you heard them not really getting paid like that, you know, in terms of like merchandise and sales and everything like that. You know, they felt like it was like they were asking to do so many favors without being compensated. You know, and it's uh, in a way that kind of felt disrespected, 
Like, yeah, we, they liked us, but I don't think they truly respected us. So that's my take. And here's another thing too about, um, about N1. I think that N1, to me, when it comes to like the style of play, when it comes to, and I would tell anybody, listen, if you want to learn the game of basketball, don't, don't really watch N1. Watch, watch uh, college, watch the pros, because that's really what's going to get you there. You know, it's all good. You know, yeah, if you want to break ankles, break ankles. But by the end of the day, it's about getting buckets. And I don't think a lot of guys can get buckets like that. But I just felt like some guys – If it if it wasn't for the the show, I don't think a lot of them would have you no know, garnered the reputation that they got. So, so that's just my thing. That's it's just my thing. Like I I enjoyed N one for what it's worth, um, but I just felt like certain guys just didn't deserve to be there, you know. And I just think that. I just think that when it's all said and done, you look back at M1 for you no know, a brief time. Yeah. It was the hottest thing on TV. But at some point, people get tired of the circus. You know, they get tired of the circus, and that's what it was. It became a circus at one point. So um you know, you just it just just go watch the documentary. Go watch the documentary. Um, y'all comment below, man. Y'all comment below. Let me know who are some of your favorite players on the M1 tour. Um, I could tell you mine. Mine's definitely was high sauce AO. Um another guy I enjoyed watching was uh Alamo, rest in peace. I enjoyed watching Sick With It. Uh Headache, of course, because you know I'm a no point guard by Trey, so watching him play, a uh, skip. I also like uh, the combination. Like to me, the best duo main event, seeing the dribbling machine. To me, the best duo out there. Uh, who else? Half man, half amazing. I I'm gonna tell you what I like about half man, half amazing. For one, you know, Kenny Smith basically stole his name, gave it to somebody else, gave that name to Vince Carter, right? And, you know, Kenny should know better. He's from New York. You don't do that. But what I like about Half Man, Half Amazing is that you could tell he's a dog on the basketball court. You know what I mean? And I I like seeing that. I like seeing, um, you know, guys out there that could go out there and just hoop, right? Like Prime Objective is another guy who I like, you know, to see play because he just go out there and just hoop. Right. And, you know, don't get me wrong. You like to see the, you know, the highlights and everything like that. But at some point, it almost seems like it gets to a point that it feels scripted, but it's not. You know what I mean? And you start seeing this, guys, you know, when when you get into an like a I like to call a real basketball situation, who's going to step up? Because once they take away those tricks from you. Who's going to step up and like, all right, this is for real. Forget the tricks. It's all about buckets. It's all about me stopping you. Who's going to rise to the case? And there's, to me, there's certain guys who just can't, right? There's certain guys who can't because you have to, when you come up, you know, like I said, when you get your name, when you get your name, you should have already established yourself before and one. And a lot of times, this is a crazy thing. Like a lot of times, a lot of uh, playground legends never play for N one. You know, like you could go old school before N one even existed, right? Pee Wee Kirkland, Fred Hammonds, um, Dr. J, Julius Irvin. It's another guy. Um, who who's the other one? Uh My mind went blank, but he's out there on the West Coast. Um, 
Uh, shoot. It was actually voted like top five greatest street ball players of all time. Man, and you had NBA legends talking about him. Um, I know, I know his name. Hook, Hook, yeah, Hook. That's his name. So, you know, when you have when you have uh, guys like that, will build a reputation, right? And you know, you could tell they earn respect from NBA players. That's that's all the thing you have to do. You know, a lot of guys they felt like you're not you haven't went through the fire that I went through. And and no, sometimes it could be that. You know, of course, times have changed over the course of you know, over the course of time. Um, but I just you know, I just I, I just say, you know, N one at a point was like I could say at one point it was like bigger than Nike. It was bigger than Nike, um, but you know if you're gonna if you're gonna slay the you know the dragon, you know you really have to go slay the dragon. And you know at N one, I don't think they really truly did that because Nike is so established, it's so big, to where it's gonna be far hard for anybody to take them out. You can compete, but in terms of beating them, I don't know. Um, but it had a great run, had a great run. And, you know, it was unfortunate that it was over, you know. And um, even I would say this, it really got bad after you saw the OGs leave, right? When, you, you know, Skip, well, Skip was there like the first season, but in terms of like every, you no, know, he did a few appearances and everything like that because he was basically in the NBA at the time. But when you see headache going, when you see main going, Shane going, half man going, uh, you know, Alamo was going at the time, uh, prime objective was going, 50 was going. Um, hot sauce was still there. I think they needed hot sauce because he was still the main attraction and people still wanted to see hot sauce. Um, you had the professor, you know, yeah, the professor was there who was still a main attraction. But I think over the course of time, you start seeing, you know, a lot of these, uh, when you start seeing these guys go, that's when you start seeing the shift, like, okay, we don't really want to watch this, you know? So, you know, it, it came to a sad ending, you know, I wish it could have ended better, but, you know, I really enjoyed that era of N1 because see, you had your NBA, during the regular season, and then in the off-season during the summertime, you had your N1 mixtape tour. So you could get basketball all year round, um, and that's what I enjoyed. I enjoyed it the most, and, you know, it would never be anything like it. I know they had another league, um, something similar to that, but it wasn't as big as N1. But, uh, yeah, it had its moments. And I'm really glad I got to enjoy it. I'm really happy that um, there were some moves I did learn from it that I used it in a real game. No, because you're going to get called every time. Violation, violation, violation. You know, turnover. And coach going to pull you out, sit you down, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, that's what it was. And, you know, it just made you see a whole nother side. You know, see. When when you played on the playground, you really didn't do all the tricks. You were just hooping, right? Um, but it brought an um, entertainment aspect to the game. I think nobody's seen before. I think that's what made it so exciting. So, you know, if they were ever, like, to come back, I don't think they should. If they talked about it, I think you should just let it go, you know, unless you find some guys who are – legends now who are on the come up who's making them name for themselves and then you go with that but i don't see how i don't see how you could duplicate something as big as that you know so uh yeah i, I really wanted to talk about this because i saw the documentary again if you haven't seen the documentaries on netflix right now so go check it out um and it's crazy how it's crazy how the uh 
and one brand started. You know, it's crazy how it started. Um, but unfortunately, you know, all great things come to an end, even though it still exists now, it's not as big as it once was. So, you know, hopefully one day it will actually uh, get back to that. And here's another thing I want to say about, you know, some of the guys, you know, you had a lot of, it's been documented. You have a lot of the OGs who felt like the young guys didn't have to work for anything. Right. And, you know, at times you have to think about, and I understand where they're coming from because you put in the work. So you really value what you have worked so hard for more so than the next person. So when they're coming up, you know, they had this platform. You didn't have that platform. It was word of mouth. You got your name through word of mouth. They had the TV, they had the production, you know, following them around, you know, making them, building their brands through the show. So I understand that point. Um, no, which a lot of guys, you know, was there some jealousy amongst them? Yeah, of course. You know, so, but that, that's just life itself. Excuse me, but uh, yeah, as a hooper, man, I, I just say this that is uh, it had a great time, but at some point, you just you just get tired of it, and you know, I think you know, I think the world got tired of him one, you know, so that's what I, I just uh, feel. That's why I feel like, and, um, you know, it's over with, you know, but those guys will always be legends. That's the thing about, they will always be legends when they go walking out and about people like, especially my generation, older generation, recognize who they are. They'll always, uh, gain respect, you know, so they always have respect, uh, will always get respect from me. So, yeah. Uh, before we uh, before we get out of here, um, there's one more thing I want to talk about uh, before we go. Uh, it's, it's an incident that happened in my hometown where there was a shooting at a football game. And luckily, no one was hurt. Luckily, no one was hurt. It happened in the parking lot during the game. Uh, you know. At uh, sporting events, right? You don't think anything can happen, but you always got to be aware of something happening. And, uh, no, unfortunately, man, there's just some people out here who just do dumb shit. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just unfortunate. And I just, uh, when I heard about it, I, I remember, I'm not going to tell you the school or anything like that, but it's in my hometown. And I was just like, what? In my hometown? Because it was all on Facebook. They were talking about it. Um, it was on the news. You know, they had, like, person with a phone capturing everything. Everybody laying on the ground, on the field, bleachers, whatever, you know. And it kind of makes you think, like, man, you know, when you have a child, you want to take your child to a game, you know, to support, you know, a loved one or, you know, whoever. It almost makes you think twice, like, man, should we go? Um, but, yeah, man, you know, listen, man, if y'all going to do dumb shit, man, do it someplace else. That's all I know. I mean, listen, especially when you're on, you're on school property. For one, you already screwed anyway just by having a gun on school property. But, uh. But, you know, if you're going to do the nonsense, man, go take it someplace else, man. Because, you know, you got kids out there, man, who just enjoying the night out. You know, just go do it someplace else, man, and just handle it there, man. Don't do not do it in front of all those people, especially when there's a game going on. So uh, that's all I wanted to say about that. That's it. Um, but, you know, I'm coming to the end of this episode right now. Uh, once again, man, y'all make sure y'all follow Drinking After Dark Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, 
And y'all make sure y'all like and subscribe to Drinking After Dark Podcast YouTube channel. Also, um, tell your friends and family about the platform. Tell them about the platform, man. Tell them uh, about Drinking After Dark Podcast, man. Um, you know, I'm really going at this, you know, so I'm really enjoying what I'm doing. And I'm telling you right now, man, this is going to be, it, this is fun. I'm on a journey right now. and. Wherever this leads me to, man, I'm just going to go with it. You know, I'm on my path. So uh, y'all continue to support. Y'all show love, man, to tell everybody about it. And if y'all have any suggestions what I should drink for my next episode, man, y'all leave it in the comments. I'll try it out, man. I'm working on some new things right now. So y'all stay tuned to that. Um, Thanks to my sponsor, Joe Shakinab and Shakinab.com. Thanks for all of you for tuning in. I can't do this without you. So appreciate it. Appreciate all the love and the support. Until next time, this is your boy Darius from Drinking Out the Dark Podcast, and I'm out. Peace. Gotta get to the money. Gotta get to the money. Uh huh. Early morning, so you know that I'm on. So you know that I'm on. Gotta make sure that my fans are straight. Gotta make sure that my kids and me. Get to the money, get to the money, uh-huh.